Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone. This is the first tutorial in a series of the anatomy of the skull, in which we'll be learning about the bones of the calvaria. So the skull has 22 bones which supports the structures of the face and provides a protective cavity for the brain. The upper part of the skull is called the neurocranium, which surrounds the cranial cavity and contains the brain. There are eight bones which make up the neurocranium. The neurocranium can be further subdivided into an upper and a lower part. The upper part is formed of the flat bones of the skull, which forms the dome-like roof. This is known as the calvaria. The lower part of the neurocranium forms the cranial base. So the lower part of the skull is called the facial skeleton or the viscerocranium. There are 14 bones which make up the facial skeleton, and we'll take a look at these in more detail in another tutorial. The mandible is the lower jaw bone and is the only movable bone of the skull, which articulates with the temporal bone at the temporomandibular joint. We will take a look at this bone separately in another tutorial. So let's focus in on the bones of the neurocranium. It consists of both paired bones and unpaired bones. The paired bones include the parietal and temporal bones, and the unpaired bones include the frontal, sphenoid, ethmoid, and occipital bones. As I mentioned previously, the neurocranium can be divided into the calvarium and the cranial base. The calvarium consists of the frontal, parietal and the occipital bones, which are joined together by fibrous sutures. The cranial base consists of the lower parts of the frontal bones, the sphenoid, the ethmoid, the temporal and the lower parts of the occipital bones. Some of these bones of the cranial base have complex and intricate anatomy, which we will focus on in separate tutorials. So let's now look at how the calvarial bones are connected and at some of their important features. The frontal bone makes up the forehead and forms the superior part of the rim of the orbit. I have done a separate tutorial on the anatomy and boundaries of the orbit for further information on this topic. So the superciliary arches are superior to the rim of the orbit bilaterally. The glabella is the name given to the depression between the superciliary arches, and you can palpate this on yourself in between your eyebrows. The supraorbital foramen, also known as the supraorbital notch, is found at the medial part of the superior rim of each orbit, and it transmits the supraorbital nerve and vessels. Looking at the medial part of the frontal bone, it dips down inferiorly and forms part of the medial rim of the orbit. Laterally, the frontal bone projects inferiorly to form the zygomatic process of the frontal bone, which articulates with the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. Looking at the posterior aspect of the frontal bone, you can see that it articulates with the parietal bone at a suture known as the coronal suture because it runs in the coronal plane. The lower part of the posterior edge of the frontal bone articulates with the greater wing of the sphenoid bone at the sphenofrontal suture. This junction where the frontal, parietal, sphenoid and temporal bones articulate is known as pterion. It's clinically very important because it's very thin and weak and it can be easily fractured due to the number of articulations here. In addition, and of significant clinical importance, it overlies the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery. Fracture here can therefore damage this artery and result in an extradural hemorrhage. Moving on to the parietal bones now. There are two parietal bones, which we've already seen anteriorly articulate with the frontal bone at the coronal suture. The parietal bones also articulate with the greater wing of the sphenoid at the sphenoparietal suture. Inferiorly, the parietal bone articulates with the temporal bone at the squamous suture. Looking superiorly in the midline, the parietal bones articulate with each other via the sagittal suture. Moving posteriorly, you can see how the parietal bones articulate with the occipital bone at the lambdoid suture. 
The last bone to talk about which makes up the calvaria is the occipital bone. Here we can see this flat part posteriorly, known as the squamous part. The inferior aspect of the occipital bone consists of the basilar part, anterior to the foramen magnum, and the lateral parts lie lateral to the foramen magnum. The occipital condyles here are these two large protuberances which allow the cranium to articulate with the vertebral column. As well as the articulation with the parietal bones, the occipital bone articulates with the temporal bone anteriorly at the occipitomastoid suture. Looking posteriorly at the squamous part of the occipital bone, there are a few key landmarks to note. The first is the external occipital protuberance in the midline. The most prominent point of this is known as inion. Extending either side from the external occipital protuberance are the superior and inferior nuchal lines. So that's the first tutorial on the skull, looking at the calvarial bones of the neurocranium. Hopefully it's given you a good idea about the parts of the skull and how they fit together. In the next tutorials, we'll be taking a look at the skull base, the facial skeleton, known as the viscerocranium, the major foramina of the skull, and I'll do a short tutorial on the sutures of the skull and some of the important craniometric points. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe and leave a comment below.